Welcome to the COPD Foundation's Patient Testimonial Video Series, My Lung Health Journey, where real stories come to life. You will hear from individuals and their loved ones navigating life with lung disease, sharing their experiences, challenges, and tips for living well with lung conditions. In this episode, you'll meet Dan. Dan is living with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Alpha-1 is a genetic condition that mainly impacts the liver and the lungs and is also known as genetic COPD. Approximately 1-3% to of COPD patients worldwide have genetic COPD, but only 1 in 10 have been diagnosed. My name is Dan Grimm. I'm a ZZ Alpha-1 patient from New York. I've been retired for a number of years now. I was a retired truck driver. I drove for 41 years in the Northeast here. When I was around 50 years old, I noticed that I was having trouble doing uh, normal activities that I never had issues with before. I was getting out of breath on a regular basis, just um, doing some of the simplest things that uh, I, I would do with my course of a truck driver. So I brought that up to my doctor at the time, and uh, my doctor just said I was out of shape. He called it deconditioning and told me to, you know, start working out even despite the fact that I had a, a very physically demanding job. That went on for a number of years. And then finally I got a, that doctor left the practice I see and I got a new uh, primary care doctor. The new doctor knew there was something else behind this. He, he couldn't answer the question at the time, but he kept looking and uh, to his credit, he never gave up, but it did take me a long time to be diagnosed. I, I wasn't diagnosed until I was 61, so it's almost 11 years from the onset of symptoms. Uh, and it's not it's not totally unusual for an alpha patient to take a long time to be diagnosed. I think the average is somewhere around seven years, and it usually takes you know three, four, five doctors before you get a final diagnosis. And in my case, it took four doctors in 11 years, so it was a little bit longer than average. But uh, and then they were treating me for asthma and things like that. They kept looking, but they couldn't find the right answer. And eventually they did the blood test and they, they then they, uh, I was diagnosed. And that was the start of my Alpha 1 journey. I know that had to be really frustrating for you. 11 years looking for a diagnosis is a really, really long time. Is there anybody else in your family who has symptoms of Alpha 1? I was the first alpha patient diagnosed in my family. So the, the first one is always the hardest. So once I was diagnosed, my wife got tested immediately. So, that, you know, that, and that gives us an indication of where your children are going to be. You know, uh, my children have subsequently been tested and they are carriers, but they, you know, my wife is uh, has normal genetic makeup, so she's not affected. They see a pulmonologist on a semi-regular basis. And, uh, and then as far as my extended family goes, uh, my mother, my mother's still with us. She's 93 and she's very active and she feels horrible that I got part of this from her, but uh, I told her there's nothing she could do about it, but she was tested. She's an MZ and uh, I have a sister that was tested as an MZ. I have a bro another brother and sister that haven't been tested yet. I, uh, I can't, I can't make them get tested. And, uh, but I give them the information. I do have one cousin that was tested and she is a uh, ZZ. You know, and that because her father, nobody knew it, but her father w must have been at least a carrier. And uh, he, her mother and father have passed away. But her mother passed away at a very early age from uh, cirrhosis of the liver. And her father passed away from emphysema. So after you're diagnosed, it kind of answers questions like this from uh, family history that, you know, unexplained uh, early death from serious illness like that is uh, it's, it makes a lot of sense after you're diagnosed. Speaking of testing, can you talk to us a little bit about what somebody might expect through the testing process? In family testing um, for other alphas, it's gotten easier. But in the last couple of years, there's been some breakthroughs on, on home testing and uh, there's new methods of, of testing with a swab. This has become a, a very important part of family testing because people can send away for these home tests and they can do them doing something they're used to doing with just swabbing. And for whatever reason, people didn't like doing the finger stick or don't like doing it. And, uh, you know, so if you do a swab test, you send it in, you get that information confidentially to your email. And then if you, if you are tested to be positive for alpha one, you can 
then make appointments with appropriate doctors and uh, get further testing and they'll do your phenotype testing and things like that. But they, uh, it's become much easier to test at home and it's really been a game changer for family testing. You order the test online and then they de-identify you. They give you a number so you're not using your name. Uh, they mail the test to your house. You get a swab. You swab, you put it in a container and you mail it back to them. It's easier than ever to get tested. We really hope that more people will get the testing done. So once you got your test results back, how did that affect your life? Well, I was diagnosed approximately, you know, five years before I had planned on retiring. And uh, as a truck driver, the environment I was working in was not a a good environment for my lungs. Uh, My doctor told me almost immediately he felt I should retire and and get out of the truck. Uh, You get away from diesel fumes and the particulate in the air of the loading docks I went to. But it just wasn't realistic for me at the time because, you know, again, I was just a few years away from my retirement and uh, I wasn't prepared at that time to financially retire. So uh, the compromise we came to is I started wearing a mask way before COVID, years and years before COVID. I started wearing a mask at work. Uh, At first, I felt a little funny, but all my coworkers were very receptive to it. And uh, they actually admonished me if I wasn't wearing a mask, if I ran out of masks or whatever. But uh, and it was funny, too, because I could show them, you know, uh, at the end of the day, there'd be a ring around my face where the masks were. And that was the stuff that everybody was breathing in, you know, that I was getting filtered on. Yeah, I had to make some lifestyle changes and uh, do some things to um, try to mitigate the symptoms I was experiencing. You know, when I first was diagnosed, I kind of just went along for the ride. I didn't explore it very much. The uh, the Alpha One Foundation always sends out information when you're first diagnosed. I enrolled in AlphaNet, which is a peer-to-peer uh, counseling. Once a month, I would get a call from an AlphaNet coordinator, and a good friend of mine now. And he, uh, he would give me educational tips every month. And a lot of that was uh, nutritional stuff and, you know, healthy living and things like that. And uh, it took me about a year to wrap my brain around what was going on. And and then I started doing a little more uh, in-depth uh, investigation into my, my medical condition. And then I, I saw how much by losing a little bit of weight, by exercising more, how, how much it made an impact on my ability to breathe normally or, or more normal, I should say. But uh, so I, I really did. I, I lost about 20 pounds and, uh, Subsequently, I, I, I found out that, uh, you know, that extra weight you carry is uh, a lot of it puts pressure on your diaphragm and really affects your breathing. It's really great that you put that education into practice. Sometimes receiving a diagnosis of a chronic condition is very difficult. Can you tell us some things that helped you adjust to the knowledge that you were living with Alpha One? Well, when I was first diagnosed, I got a call from uh, my first coordinator. And when I was first diagnosed, again, I was, I was upset. I was actually mad. I was, I was, you know, I'm five years away from retirement. I get this news that I have a, an incurable medical condition that's going to require a weekly infusion. I didn't know how it was going to affect my work situation. So I was actually angry and he, he was like the perfect person for me. He called me up. He said, look, I understand some people get these feelings. You know, I, 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 I was kind of rude to him. And uh, he really, really helped me wrap my head around it through education, just by listening to me and letting me vent. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a dear friend of mine now. But the uh, at the time, he was the perfect person to talk to me because besides besides giving me the moral support I needed, he was able to give me educational support and disease management and say, look, this becomes becomes a routine. I had to get weekly infusions, which I started immediately. And uh, I really didn't know much about Alpha One. It's a part of your life. I have a, a nurse that comes to my house and I she's one of my best friends. I see her one, you know, once a week for about an hour, hour and a half. And uh, it's, it's, it's more of a socialization thing. I, yes, I get an infusion, but uh, you know, and he helped me understand that it becomes a routine part of your life. It's part, you know, and it'll help you medically to stay and keep an active lifestyle, keep your lifestyle as close as possible to where it is now. And uh, so that really helped me out a lot. In our last few minutes, Dan, what important information would you share with our listeners that you think is really important for them to know? 
you can always contact the Alpha One Foundation and they'll put you in touch with the right person. And, uh, you know, during, we have education days, I think, six times a year. You know, there's always people in, in person that you can talk to with those. And then, you know, and you can talk to other Alpha patients or, you know, support groups are a great way. It's very important to have those those peer-to-peer meetings, you know, just just to be able to discuss, you know, and we'll, we'll meet either virtually or in person and have lunch or whatever, but just to be able to meet with people that have the same issues and conditions you do is, uh, it's, it's, it's very powerful. And it, it, you know, it puts into perspective where your, your personal health is. Be open with your doctors, discuss with them what you feel you you need to continue on with your lifestyle, you know, and, uh, you know, when it comes to exercise, nutrition, following your doctor's advice, all those things added together really can can extend your life and, and make your lifestyle as close to normal as possible. You've been listening to Dan share part of his journey with Alpha One. For more information about chronic lung conditions, visit copdfoundation.org. You can also learn more about Alpha One by visiting the Alpha One Foundation at alphaone.org.